I mean, 10 to 85 knot climb, like I said, we're going to make sure. 52, he's going to prove your description. That's the horizon. It's about two inches below the horizon. This is what it should look like to you. Now, the horizon is not very fine today. 52, he's going to prove left to 95, and we have FAW. All we'll do, once we set the pitch at two outside, and we set the power, we're going to push enough right rudder in to maintain a straight uh, heading. So that will keep us coordinated. Um, which your instructor will explain to you more as you do uh, more theory on the ground. But uh, you're pushing enough right rudder to stay in a straight line. How do I know I'm in a straight line? I'm going to pick a visual reference directly in front of me. I have a cloud in front of me there. And I also have a ground reference, a lake. So I'm pushing enough right rudder. And you'll notice here, I need my slip skid indicator that I am coordinated. As we go around flight, we are the car, so you want to make sure that you are looking out for traffic. So the best way to do this is try and start right behind you, look at your left wing, and slowly scan like a radar left to right. And it should take you about nine the seconds 12, 900, to get down. back to the magnetic compass right here. Once you get back to the magnetic compass, you're going to look inside, make sure you're on your airspeed, stop climbing, for now we're going up to 3000. You're on your heading, which I'm slightly to the uh, right of it, so I'll go back to the left. And check the engine parameters. Engine parameters make sure everything's full. 52 contact on the as you the green. Fuel flow is going to show above the green. For example, the sun is parked right then. Take an attitude. I have some information. You got a bad time. Let's get it. 9 seconds out. All the way behind the right wing. And 9 seconds back towards the magnetic compass. You look back inside at your airspeed, altimeter, BSI, heading, and your engine parameters. Back scanning technique will keep your eyes outside uh, for the most part, but also verifying your performance. Now we are coming up to altitude, about 50 feet, which is 10% above the BSI. We'll slowly reduce the pitch of the aircraft in the horizon. We'll get the horizon about Halfway to the top magnetic compass, depending on your height. Once we lower the nose, we'll let the aircraft speed up. About 85, 90 knots, and at that point, we'll reduce the power slowly. Back to about 2350 RPM. That should give us about 100 knots. 100 knots cruise speed. Again, while we're doing this, looking out for traffic. As up, so we set our power. We're going to set our pitch. And once we set the power, we'll set the pitch, now we'll set the trip, so that I can let go of the yoke, and the nose stays where yeah, it's a, it, the way we set it. Now, I won't exactly stay there the entire time, you still have to make small corrections. Once we set our cruise power, our cruise pitch, and we've tripped it out, this is our indication to bring in our cruise checklist. We'll bring out our cruise checklist. Nope, looking for 419. Looking for higher. Cruise power is set. Make sure you put the on the on the the on the uh, for traffic, we're going to scan technique. And we're back inside. Okay. 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 We want that to happen. Control, direct warm and distance approved. Start turning counterclockwise. And approved in 12. Please tell, cut the warm and tire. 4,000 in 12. And we're at 14, climb 18, vehicle 4,500. So I get the rough end. And there it is. This RPM dropping about 20, 30 RPM. So that's why I stop. I let the EGT number stabilize. Now slowly. 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, I think we should improve it, go up to the top of the area of frequency. I'll right. continue on my leaning. I'm going to start enriching the mixture here, since we already had the engine RPM drop. 
and the EGT gauge may still start continue rising, and it typically does. We're going to watch it until it starts decreasing. Now when it starts decreasing, which as it is doing now, we want to enrich it to, for our procedures at, at the university, to negative 75. You'll notice that I'm not moving the mixture, but it's still decreasing in temperature. So there's a lag, and you want to make sure that you're accountable for the lag. So don't keep on turning it. Once it's turned, it once it starts decreasing in the in the in the EGT temperature, let it stabilize before you turn again. So right now you can see it's stabilized at negative 48. So I'm going to do another quarter turn in and see uh, how far it goes down. And again, I'm trying to get to negative 75. Oh, this Alright, so that's coming up to negative 71, 70, close enough, 72. checklist. Right, we'll take the landing light and I'll put it to recog, so that way it kind of flashes in the air, and people know where we are. Alright, cruise checklist. Okay. So now we're in the practice area, we actually need to look at our entity here, we've cleared the Charlie, an easy way to go, there's the power lines that run up to the west of the Toyota, and once we clear the power lines, that tells us that we actually clear the Toyota Beach's airspace. So a good idea to have landmarks to tell you once you're clear, you don't have to rely on your moving map, you don't want to move, you, you can use your moving map as extra situational awareness. Okay, so, now in the practice area, uh, we'll first talk about how to maintain straight and level flight. Now, straight and level flight is the basic fundamental of flying. Anything that we do from this, anything we do is a deviation from straight and level. Straight meaning we're maintaining a, st a straight heading, it's a, a constant heading. And level meaning we're maintaining a specific altitude. So as of now, as you can see, I'm maintaining 300 on my heading and I'm maintaining 3000 feet. So that tells me that I'm straight and level at 300 and 3000 feet. Now, to uh, set that, like we said earlier, we're looking at the horizon for pitch, and what I want you to do is look at the magnetic compass and look at the horizon. Now, again, the horizon is not quite clearly defined today, but you want to look at the position of the horizon in relation to the magnetic compass. If the horizon appears to be on top of the magnetic compass, like touching the top of the magnetic compass, that is your pitch attitude for cruise flight at 100 knots and 23, uh, 23 to 23 RPM. That tells you that that's the pitch attitude of power setting for 100 knot cruise. Something that's interesting is let's say I wanted to go to uh, a 90 knot cruise. Well, if I want to change a performance number like a cruise power, a cruise airspeed, that requires a change in pitch and power, both of them. Now, Pitch and power like a married couple. You can't change one without changing the other. So if I want to go to a 90 knot uh, cruise, now we said that the cruise for 100 knots at 2350 RPM is about horizon on top of the compass. I'll reduce the power back to 2200 RPM. But what you'll notice here is that the nose tends to want to pitch down when I do this. So you have to increase back pressure on the yoke, so that the nose doesn't suddenly just go down. Now what I'll do is the pitch attitude should be slightly higher, so I'll put the horizon about, if it was on top of the magnetic compass, I'll put it to about halfway on the magnetic compass. Now your primary control for airspeed is power, and your primary control for altitude is pitch, since we're in the region of normal command. Once we get into slow flight later on in the, uh, a different flight that we'll do, we'll show the, the control effectiveness and the, and, the, and the control changes. So notice here, so I set the horizon about halfway up the magnetic compass or about an inch lower than what you previously had. And I set about 2200 RPM. Now that, that's giving me 85 knots. I'm maintaining altitude. It's not really giving me the speed I want. So that means the power is too low for that. So I increase the power about another 20 to 30 RPM. And as I do that, I'm still looking for traffic left to right. What you notice now is that I'm at 90 knots 
at 3,000 so feet. Say, uh, so set a performance goal, maybe a speed that you want, or a constant rate climb, uh, whatever configuration you want. You've got to change the pitch and power, and you set a, you set a ballpark pitch and power. What you, what you previously know, you know, your instructor will tell you what these ballpark numbers are, and you'll figure out what works best for you. But that doesn't work on every single day and every single flight. Things like configuration changes or flap usage or uh, temperature changes and weight of the aircraft, CG of the aircraft will change these numbers on a daily basis. Fortress so area, traffic, you set the ballpark number four, to what you know and then you fine tune feet. it from there. Like I want to return back to normal cruise flight. I know that the horizon was on top of the magnetic compass and I know that I had 2350 RPM. So I'll set 2350 RPM and I'll simultaneously reduce the pitch of the nose so that the horizon is halfway uh, is, uh, on top of the magnetic compass. Traffic. I do have traffic in sight directly in front of me. I've had them in sight the, this point in time and they're flying away so it's not a factor for us. Once I got my RPM back, I set my pitch back, I'll use the trim to reduce the pressure of the yoke so that I'm not fighting the yoke. Anytime you're doing a configuration change, you're going to do three things. Set the pitch, set the power, and set the truck. Where is those three things? So this is what straight and level flight looks like. Now let's say I wanted to, to climb to 3,500 feet. Uh, well, let's make it 4,000 to give you enough time to actually see what's happening. So 4,000 feet. Well, let's do a VY climb. So VY climb, remember earlier from our previous briefing, was that our top of the cowling, our nose, was generally touching the horizon, and we had full power. But remember, we had those things called left-turning tendencies. So when we add the full power, we have to increase right body pressure, and we have traffic that we're just gonna turn away from here. We have right rudder pressure so that we traffic. maintain a constant straight line. So we're going, to do a, we're going to do a straight climb. We're going to do a straight climb up to 4,000 feet at VY. So we we'll simultaneously increase the pitch, horizon up to, uh, put the top of the cowling up to the horizon, increase full power, and increase right rudder pressure enough to keep a visual reference directly in front of you. So I've got a cloud in front of me, I'm putting enough right rudder. And what you'll notice here is that I'm still coordinated. So once we set the pitch, set the power, now we're going to set the trim. I'm looking for VY, which is 74 knots. So let's look at our airspeed indicator once we've set the pitch and power and trim. We'll look at our airspeed indicator and you'll notice that I'm at 72, 73. So I'm, I'm pretty close to what I wanted. I am coordinated and I am maintaining my heading. How do I know I'm doing that? Is that my visual reference is still directly in front of me. If my airspeed starts going down, if I'm getting lower than what I want, just reduce the pitch of the nose about a quarter of an inch to half an inch below the horizon to what you previously had. And then once I've set the pitch and power outside and I set the power, I can look inside to verify that I'm getting what I want. Again, nine seconds left to right. I look inside to make sure promise. So you want to spend about 90% outside, 10% inside. So that's the VY climb. If I want to transition to a cruise climb, that was 85. I want the horizon about two inches above the cowling. So I'll, I'll reduce the pitch of the nose. So the horizon is two inches above the cowling. And I'll trim it out. Now it's still full power. And what you'll notice is that the airspeed should start increasing. Here's a traffic call to a 22 at the radios of our five medical miles. East of Lake Winter at 3200, climbing to 35 feet. I'll come up to 4,000 feet. That's out to the water, about 10% of the VSI. It's about 30, 40 feet. We're going to go back to the 100 knot cruise. So we're going to put the horizon on top of the cowling, uh, sorry, on top of the magnetic compass, and reduce the power as the aircraft speeds up to 85 knots. Now we'll start reducing the power back to that RPM we discussed earlier of 2350. Nice and smooth. And as you're doing this, you can start releasing that right rudder pressure that you had in, so that the rudder is now neutral. That's how you do a VY climb. And, of, and also what's called the cruise climb. Those are the two climbs that you'll typically see on your first few flights. Let's talk about descending. Obviously, once we go up in altitude, now we have to come down. Now there's uh, different uh, types of uh, descents. We can do a constant uh, airspeed descent, just like the climb. We had 74 knots, 85, which is called constant airspeed climbs. 
we can do constant airspeed descent. So we can do 100 knot descent. Uh, we can do a 70 knot descent, 65 knot descent, depending on what we're trying to no, actually do with the aircraft. No, we so let, let's first show you uh, how to so do a 100 knot descent at 500 feet per minute. Now remember, the primary control for airspeed is power, and the primary control for altitude is pitch. Now the pitch, in this case, the descent, once we set the power, will actually control um, the airspeed that we want. So before I start my descent, I'm going to reduce the power to 2,000 RPM. Again, the nose is going to, going to try and pitch down, but this time we want it to pitch down. We're going to put the horizon about 3 inches above the magnetic compass. Right about here, and we'll trim it out so that I can let go of the yoke. You'll see the aircraft stays in that pitch attitude. I'm looking for that 100 knots of sense. I've said 2,000 RPM. Now, I'm getting about 93 knots, so what I can do is reduce the pitch about another half an inch down until I get my 100 knots, but I, I, once I make a change, I need to wait until everything stabilizes like the airspeed, which is what I'm trying to change, before I make another change. If you make too many changes, you will never get a stable flight. We have about 96 knots here, and what you notice so are about 2,000, uh, between 2,000 and 2,100 RPM, I'm getting about 100 knot descent and at about 750 feet and then adjust here for 500 feet per minute. So this is called a constant airspeed descent. I'm just going to turn around here. We'll talk about turns here in a little bit, but I want to turn around just for, we've got restricted areas out to the west of Lake George here. So a constant airspeed descent. Once we set the power, we'll adjust our pitch and we'll adjust the uh, pitch as necessary to maintain the speed that we want. At 3,000 feet, 50 cent from our VSI, I'm going to increase the pitch where the horizon is back to the top of the magnetic compass and increase the power simultaneously once I've set my, well, once I've set my pitch, increase the power back to 2350. You want to be careful not to increase the power as you're still descending, otherwise that may uh, increase the airspeed too fast. Area traffic, That's called a constant airspeed descent. Maybe a traffic control wants you to maintain something called a constant rate descent. Now, constant rate descent is where we will maintain, if we look at our VSI, that's our primary instrument that we'll use to verify that we maintain a constant rate descent. Now, again, we'll just set a ballpark figure. And typically, we descend at 100 knots, unless ATC tells us not to, or unless we're trying to do something different. Well, again, I'll reduce the power, look at the horizon, which is unfortunately blocked up by clouds. But look at, the, we'll look at the horizon, set the power back to 2,000 RPM, set the nose down 3 inches from where it was previously, and we'll trim it out. And we'll wait till all the number stabilizes, be stabilize before we make any more changes. Now, you'll notice here, I'm maintaining about 550 feet per minute descent, and about 95 knots, so I'm pretty close to what I want. I'll make small fine-tune adjustments from here. Uh, I'll use the pitch to control that radius center. So I'm looking outside for traffic, still looking left to right, making sure that I'm doing my scan technique. And once I've set the pitch, I don't really need to look inside that much anymore. I have to ver look inside, I'll just verify that I'm getting what I want, and if I'm not, I'll make fine-tune uh, fine adjustments. We are getting too low, too close to the clouds here, so what I'll do is I'll start another VY climb. Power, put the nose on the horizon, and we'll climb out. Something that you will have to watch out for in Florida is the clouds do build up relatively fast. Yeah, it's on 48 at Columbia, 5 miles to the east of the existing 4,100 feet south. When I'm climbing below 3,000, I want to put the mixture full forward. Above 3,000 feet, so what I want to do now is leave the mixture out until I get to the operation again. We are making all the time about 3,000. Listen for the RPM drop. Get the mixture control rotating counterclockwise. There's an engine RPM drop, and I'll smoothly increase the direction of the mixture now, turn it clockwise until I get smooth engine operation. Our primary control again for airspeed is power, and our primary control for pitch is uh, for altitude is pitch. 
So if I'm going too fast, I want to reduce, adjust the power, but if I adjust the power, I need to change the pitch appropriately. Climb back up to a safe altitude here, get a thousand feet, at least a thousand feet above these clouds. The airspace that we're operating in, those are the VFR requirements. There's Lake Crescent right here, so that's how we know we're pretty close to the Crescent practice area. I'll make a radio call just to ensure that everyone knows what we are and what we're doing. Crescent traffic, Skywalk, 182 Echo Romeo. 182 Mike Alpha is uh, 3 south of Lake Crescent at 3,800 for my middle. What's that? Call sign. Uh, not the riddle call sign, we'll use our full tail number this time in the practice area. Yeah, we'll level off again. 100 knots. May 350 RPM, horizon on the top of magnetic compass. It might be slightly difficult for you. Uh, uh, would you have pressed the first time? Ah, but uh, again, uh, you'll bring out the first two, your best pitch attitude to use once you actually start flying and adjust your seat by the way. So the next thing we're going to do is, uh, so we can see straight level at 100 knots, straight level at 90 knots, so you see how the pitch actually starts increasing as you slow down to maintain altitude. And uh, you've all seen constant airspeed climbs and constant airspeed descents and constant, airspeed, uh, constant rate descents. We also have another type of descent called a power idle descent, which at that position, since the power is idle, the airspeed will actually be controlled with pitch. So if I had to pull the power to idle here, we'll look at the horizon as we do this. We'll maintain back pressure. There's a power to idle. We'll maintain back pressure enough to keep the horizon still on top of the magnetic compass. And what you'll notice is that your airspeed starts decreasing. Now if I want to maintain 68 knots, I'll let the airspeed decrease 68 knots, and then I'll reduce the pitch about three to four inches. I can adjust and maintain the glide. Now you'll notice that since the power's idle, I can't really control the airspeed with power, which is my normal control, so it's now become pitch. So I look at my airspeed, I'm at 70 knots. Horizon right now, once I've decreased, it comes back up to about what you have for cruise flight, uh, 68 knots. And you'll notice that horizon's on top of the compass, and 68 knots again. Horizon's unfortunately blocked up for most of the clouds. That's why you also verify inside that you're getting what you're getting. You can't just use primary, uh, you can't just stare outside, and you can't just stare inside. So you've got to use both of them, but your primary scan is outside. That's called a power idle descent. I'll come return back to normal cruise flight here, which again was 2350, since I already have my pitch set with horizon at top of the compass. I just got to set the power back in to maintain my altitude. That's called a power idle descent. I'll climb back up here, here. And the last thing I want to show you today is a uh, level turns. Level turns is changing heading without changing altitude. I'll get back to a safer altitude here, away from these clouds. Now, there's different types of bank angles that we can use when we turn. There's shallow banks, medium banks, and steep banks. A shallow bank is anything from 0 to 20 degrees of bank medium bank would be anything between 20 to 45, and a steep bank is anything greater than 45 degrees of bank. Lake Distant Area Traffic, Arrow 2294, 5 miles southwest of Lake Distant. Uh, for the most part, in these initial flights, you'll be using shallow and medium banks. Um, you won't be introduced to steep turns until you're a little further on and, and you've mastered the whole uh, four fundamentals, which is able to climb, turn, and descend, and maintain straight and level flight. Once you've mastered that, your instructor will move you on to uh, a little more technically advanced maneuvers. So, here's our attitude indicator, and it shows our bank angle. So we've got 10 degrees here, 20 degrees, and 30 degrees. We'll stay in that area for now. A primary indication of our bank angle, though, once we're transitioning, is going to be our horizon. We'll use the horizon for everything. Uh, and since we're maintaining altitude, we're not going to adjust the power. There's a couple of things that's going to happen when you turn. Right now, we have lift acting perpendicular to uh, straight up uh, perpendicular to the aircraft, the wings. 
when you turn, when you tilt the the uh, the lift vector, it actually creates components. We call a vertical component and a horizontal component. The vertical component is what actually keeps us up at altitude, and that has to be equal to the weight of the aircraft, uh, which will keep us at altitude. The resultant force, the uh, total lift vector, will have to be increased to counteract, counteract the resultant force of the, the centrifugal force pulling us outside of the turn. And the horizontal component is what is, what is actually causing us to yaw and actually turn. So when you, for us to increase enough of the vertical, vertical component to maintain our altitude, we have to increase back pressure. How much back pressure? It depends on the amount of bank. The more bank you put in, the more back pressure you have to increase, enough to keep your pitch attitude constant. Your pitch attitude will not change throughout the different various bank angles. What will change is the amount of back pressure that you increase. So, if I want to go into a shallow bank, I look at the horizon, and we'll maintain 3,900 feet. Now, a shallow bank, we'll go to about 10 to 15 degrees. So, I look at the horizon, I'm going to put left aileron and left rudder, and now we're going to put the Now, a shallow bank, I have what is called a total stability. If I let go of the controls, what you'll notice, if you look at the horizon, the aircraft actually turns back, returns back to normal flight. It returns back to where uh, we move the crop. So that's called positive stability. So shallow banks have that kind of stability. They try to come back to where you originally were. So then what that means for you is that for you to keep it in the bank, you actually have to continuously use ailerons to keep it in the bank that you want to stay. So if I want to go to about 15 years of bank, which is left aileron, left rudder, as right about here, I'll have to start increasing, so increase, a little bit of left uh, aileron pressure to the direction of the turn. Now, my rudder at this point is neutral, okay? And the reason we use rudder is to counteract what's called adverse yaw. As I roll out, I'll put right aileron, right rudder, and again, looking at the horizon, keeping the horizon on top of the magnetic compass. Now, one thing that I took out a thing called Atlas you earlier, I want you to look at the horizon. I'm not going to put any rudder in. I want you to watch what the nose does in relation to the horizon. What you'll notice there is I'm turning right, but the nose actually swung out to the left. That's called Atlas you The left wing is creating more lift than the right wing, which actually creates more drag and pulls us towards the opposite the way we're trying to turn. So that's called adverse yaw. And that's what we're trying to counteract with our rudders. But that only happens when you're actually transitioning in and out of banks. When I'm inside the bank, when I'm in the bank, there, for the most part, should be no rudder used. It's only when I'm transitioning to the, in and out of the bank that I'll use the rudder. So if I go back to that shallow bank we talked about, 15 degrees, I'll put left aileron, left rudder. Then, once we get to 15, which is horizon, about this angle with the dashboard, and we'll verify inside, that's 15 degrees right there. And you'll see that I'm still neutralized the rudders now, neutralized the rift rudder, and I'm still having to input a little left aileron every now and then to keep the bank angle. If you look at the ailerons, see how I keep having to move it to the left. I'm still maintaining altitude, enough back pressure. There's not a lot of back pressure here, so I climbed a little bit because I increased too much back pressure. So uh, you'll see that there's not a lot of back pressure to maintain your pitch. And when I go to a medium bank, which is anything between 20 to 45, but we'll do about 30 degrees, I have to increase more back pressure than you did in the 20 degree bank. Now the thing with medium banks is that they tend to show something called neutral stability. Neutral stability means that once I get my aircraft into the bank, 30 degrees, once I neutralize the controls, the aircraft should for the most part, stay at 30 degrees, as opposed to 15, which tries to come back to the okay. original position. Okay. So left aileron, left rudder, right, looking at the horizon here, increasing enough back pressure, not a lot, just to maintain my pitch, left aileron, left rudder, and once I get to 30 degrees of bank, I'll neutralize the rudder and neutralize the ailerons. What you notice here, if you look at the ailerons, the ailerons are moving, but maintaining 30 degrees of bank. As opposed to when I was at 15, I had to keep on increasing a little lift aileron pressure to maintain my bank. I'll turn to normal cruise here, uh, normal flight, left strain level, so I had to put a right aileron right right on the rollout. 
to maintain coordination and my uh, enough back pressure to maintain my pitch. So that's what we call level turns. So we have to use rudder when we're transitioning inside and outside of the banks to counteract that adverse yaw we, we saw earlier. And we'll notice two things about today's flight in terms of turning. One, if I use a shallow bank, 0 to 20 degrees, it has positive stability, which means I have to keep on adding an airline pressure towards the turn to keep it in the bank. And then medium banks have the neutral stability, which means that once I set the bank, I don't have to put any other further uh, flight control inputs to maintain the bank. It'll stay there. Those are the four fundamentals. We've learned how to maintain straight level flight at 100 knots and 90 knots looking at the horizon and uh, our power settings. And we've, made, we've, taught, we've learned how to do a VY climb and a cruise climb. And we've also learned how to do a constant airspeed, a constant rate, and a gliding descent. The last thing we learned today is how to do level turns at shallow and medium banks. So that's about uh, as enough uh, for today. And that's about as much as we'll get in for today. So uh, at this point, we will return back to Daytona now.